The biggest reason to be independently wealthy is for how you can fulfill your mission. But a lot of people see money as this bad thing, dirty thing. If they unconsciously think money is evil, they're not going to allow that money to come in. The very first step is you have to become aware of your current thinking. Most people don't realize that their thoughts are in the toilet, that they're, re they're listening and, and to themselves say negative things about 70,000 times a day. 70,000. 70,000. There are some research studies that are showing it's higher than that. And the other thing that's more startling is that they're mostly repetition. They're the same thoughts. There are things like, I'm not good enough, it's not going to work out, this stuff works for other people, works for Joe Vitale, but it doesn't work for me. Um, they want to do things, but they think um, you know, the economy's wrong, the president's wrong, um, the timing is wrong, I don't have enough education, I don't have enough experience. All of these kinds of negative thoughts keep people shut down. They don't go for their dreams. They react to life, they kind of crawl through life uh, with no enthusiasm, no sort of energy and no belief in themselves or the possibilities of something better. What the Law of Attraction is teaching people is that you have a choice. You can change your thinking. One way to look at this is the thoughts you're having right now are primarily negative. So that's the first thing to notice. Your thoughts are primarily negative. The second one is you're not your thoughts. You are separate from your thoughts. And this is massive earth-shaking news if somebody's hearing it for the very first time. There have been books that are called, You Are Not Your Mind, You Are Not Your Brain. And what they're saying is, these thoughts that we're having, we're having them, we're not them. If we can detach enough to go, oh, here comes that, I'm not good enough thought again, and let it go by, we are one step removed from it. Now we've, we've clipped off that energy that was causing us to feel bad because of that thought. So that's the second step, is to become aware that I'm not my thoughts. Third step is to start to generate what you do want to think. And this is where things like affirmations, positive thinking, positive statements, instead of saying I'm not good enough, begin to say I am good enough. Begin to say this can work out for me. If this uh, material has worked for other people, why can't it work for me too? I tell people the biggest reason to be independently wealthy is for how you can fulfill your mission. You're fulfilling your divine calling. You're fulfilling whatever it is that you're feeling is your vision uh, for a complete life. And so I think at that point, that is beautiful. What a fantastic reason to have wealth or to have jet. It's a difference you can make in people's lives. Such a fascinating concept, Joe, because a lot of people in the quote unquote spiritual world, they have this real dysfunctional relationship with money and possession. Yeah. And I usually say to them, look, the money allows you to scale your message and help more people. As soon as they see it, then the whole concept of quote unquote sales yeah. becomes more interesting. All of it becomes a means to an, a greater end of a yes. greater good. Yeah. But a lot of people see money as this bad thing, dirty thing. If they unconsciously think money is evil, they're not going to allow that money to come in. Why would you want anything evil in your life? You will not allow money to come in as long as you think it's bad, it's evil, it's going to corrupt you, it'll corrupt other people, it's tainted in some way. This is an unconscious belief that virtually everybody has. So the first thing I do to help people with this, and I want to help your viewers right now with this, is to realize that is a shortened biblical phrase. The longer phrase is, the love of money is the root of all evil. But let's look at it even deeper than that. The wealthy people I know, including myself, the healthy wealthy people I know, are not in love with money. They appreciate money, they use money, they leverage money, but they're not in love with money. That is a huge, massive difference. As soon as somebody realizes, oh, money is actually just a means of exchange that we've agreed on. We don't have to give goat skins in exchange for you know milk or something at this point. The old barter system, now we have something called money. Well, it's not bad, it's not evil, it's paper, it's coin, it's nothing. You know, it's a symbol for energy. And so I tell people that when you realize money is neutral, that you don't fall in love with it, but you use it. And what do you use it for? What you were just talking about, to fulfill your dreams to build your business, to make something of service to people. Money enables you to do all of these th different things. There was an author, Arnold Patton, 
who said this wonderful quote. I wish I had originated this quote. It's so good. But I always give him credit and I always repeat it. The sole purpose of money is to express appreciation. The sole purpose of money is to express appreciation. When I first heard it, I thought, well, there's bound to be an exception to that. And then I started thinking, well, when I pay any bill, it's for something I wanted. I bought a guitar here in London. It's like I wrote a check. I'm really grateful to have that guitar. When I pay my internet bill or I pay a car payment or I buy whatever it happens to be, I say thank you because the sole purpose of money is to express appreciation. This is an entirely new attitude that I invite people to take on. When they drop that money is evil, that can allow money to come in. Right. When they think that money is a tool for appreciation, now there's a sense of love and gratitude around it. But you don't love money, you use money.